This video is sponsored by me. Not only is listening to vinyl inconvenient, it's also expensive. So protect your damn records and get the official middle eight record brush at the first link below. Review of the new Queens of the Stone Age. Take a closer look. Middle eight is overrated. So, Frank, what do you got, man? Songs for the Deaf is one of the last great hard rock albums of recent memory. It's just bass, drums, guitar, and plain old overdrive. <laughs> It saw Queens of the Stone Age capitalize on their unique position in rock, assembling a one-time only star-studded lineup for a loose concept album, a drive through the blistering California desert. Buckle up. After the breakup of his band Caius, guitarist Josh Homme would start a band of his own, Gamma Ray. Wait, that can't be right. Queens of the Stone Age. Largely produced by Hami himself, their self-titled debut fused art metal with pop pleasures, separating this new project from their heavier Caius catalog. Going forward, the band's lineup would change frequently, bringing new minds, styles, and singers to each new release. Their sophomore Rated R saw a myriad of Rock's misfits collaborate on the project, most notably Caius bassist Nick Oliveri helping to both solidify and expand on their hard rock sound. During the turn of the millennium, the rock genre was going through a sort of revival, and Queens of the Stone Age were on the front lines, ensuring that people didn't forget about rock and roll. For their third album, Hami would continue to guard the rock flame by summoning a dream team of musicians, including Josh Hami, Nick Oliveri, Mark Lanigan and Dave Grohl. The legendary Dave Grohl put the Foo Fighters on hold to become the full-time drummer of Queens of the Stone Age. It was a collaboration that was years in the making. Songs for the Deaf would be the first and last time this lineup would appear on a record together. Kind of. But more on that later. With three vocalists and a number of guests joining them for the project, Hami was worried that the album would sound too all over the place. It was bassist Oliveri that would push for the album to follow a loose concept. Initially against it, Hami thought it would only get in the way of tracks, but he eventually agreed that the concept might help pull these sounds together and keep some fluidity between tracks. Songs for the Death puts us in the driver's seat for an expedition through the desert, from downtown LA to Joshua Tree. Inspired by the hot and sweaty route Hami would frequent between gigs, each track represents a city along the way. There's only one problem though. The radio is only picking up bizarre stations from the small towns en route, which wind up serving as the soundtrack for this journey. They feature the band's personal reflections on this remote voyage. And as we venture deeper into the desert, the further we head into the group's psyche. Songs on the album end with these mock radio broadcasts, poking fun at pretentious radio hosts and mundane mainstream music. Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. The dial first lands on Clone Radio, and our host, Kip Casper, introduces the saga. It's songs for the deaf. You can't even hear it. Before exploding into the first track. Millionaire kicks off the album like a massive punch to the face. Roaring guitars, heavy drums, and Oliveri screaming his guts out. Setting the mood for the rest of the record, it's also pretty representative of how you might feel in LA traffic. Now their definitive single, No One Knows proved that Queens of the Stone Age could craft a groovy, radio-ready tune. It features Hami's classic vocal swagger over a bouncy blues riff, and cascading drums that build towards a wailing solo. The track is vaguely about drug use, but no one really knows. What we do know is that we're only picking up Spanish stations at this leg of the trip, but it's all good, because they're about to play some more Queens of the Stone Age. Vamos a escuchar un par de temas de Queens of the Stone Age. Primero vamos a escuchar First and Give It. First and Give It, better take it away. 
featuring a dramatic falsetto from Hami. First, it giveth showcases the group's capacity for colossally heavy instrumentation, meshed with menacing melodies. Continuing with the rock and roll way of life, lyrics thematically touch on the tendency for musicians to use drugs as an inspiration in writing songs only to find that their drug dependency eventually takes something away from them as well. Despite making a whole album about drug use prior, it doesn't appear as if the subject matter has changed dramatically for Queens. They're still drug addicts and they're still sick. Song for the Dead plays out like a highlight reel for every member of the band. Dave Grohl's drumming is as hard as nails and has him tearing apart the kit throughout. Tommy and Oliveri's fuzzed out guitars play off one another in a sort of call and response pattern. It's also the first time we hear Screaming Trees' Mark Lanigan on vocals, lending the track his grunge inspired rasp. It concludes with an insane outro and a number of false stops, as if refusing to ever die. The first moment of release arrives at The Sky Is Fallen, and lyrically, things are getting more introspective, with the harsh realization that holding grudges is just a waste of time. So the radio concept initially spawned from the band's frustration in not being able to find anything good on the radio, and as we pass through Chino Hills, we encounter that very situation. The girdle. Elastic ass with you here in Chino Hills, the last frontier. That's where we're at. And so, Queens of the Stone Age crafted their own stations. And as you flip through them, you go from death metal to hypnotic blues riffs, relentless rock tunes, and simple, almost Beatles-esque pop melodies. Gonna Leave You isn't your typical heartbreak song. It's about a breakup with heroin, uniting relationship issues with drug addiction. That theme plays out a little further in the next track. Do it again. Do it again. Our protagonist doesn't drop their addiction, but instead maintains a relationship with their drugs. He tries changing the station, but by now, we're in the thick of the desert, picking up even stranger radio tuning. <laughs> A trance like ZZ Top riff starts off God is in the radio. And not only is God in the radio, but he's broken the fourth wall in the recording studio. There's a section in the track that when played in reverse, reveals something more. God is coming through the radio. Or maybe the radio just has our driver reflecting and discovering more about themselves. Either way, it's been a long trip, so why not yet another love song? I can be your hero, baby. It's just another love song. Another love song. Love for drugs or an actual lover, who knows at this point? Naturally, Queens conclude the album on a feminine note. This is W-O-M-B, the womb, and a few of my pets learn to listen. I'll let you crawl back in. So who are the deaf? Men? Addicts? Who continually refuse to change their destructive ways? Whoever they are, this next one's for them. A song for the deaf that is for you. Likely Queens' darkest track, A Song for the Deaf is scary, heavy, and sexy. But it doesn't take itself too seriously. It manages to capture all three vocalists on the record before the final radio interlude perfectly wraps up this journey. You're listening to WANT, the High Desert Wonder Valley favorite radio station. 
It's been a good night. Dave Catching here. Not saying good night, just saying. You've arrived at Rancho de la Luna in Joshua Tree, your home, and the radio greets you with the hidden track Mosquito Song. It not only shows off the band's musical complexity more than any other song on the album, it acts as a counterbalance to the heaviness of everything we've heard thus far. This song speaks for the tired aftermath of the arduous drive you've just endured. It references mortality and the lack of meaning in our existence. All us food has a day. Notice how we're listening to a station named Want, W-A-N-T. a nod to the driver choosing only to hear what they want, choosing to ignore their obvious issues and instead driving off into the California desert. They are rejecting the idea of being born again from the metaphorical womb, songs that fall on deaf ears. The fairly loose concept throughout Songs for the Deaf was meant to mock the very mainstream this album broke the band into. It spoke to Hami's aversion towards going mainstream and selling out, while also saying that radio DJs only play trash. The title itself pokes fun at radio listeners for their music tastes, implying that they must be deaf if that's what they're listening to. Its major success was ironic in the greatest way possible. It was proof that quality rock music could break the mainstream, even when it's parroting the system it aims to break. After the album's release, their lineup would shift yet again. Grohl toured with the group for a short time before going back to fronting the Foo Fighters. Hami kicked Oliveri out of the band due to accusations of physical abuse, and Lanigan would hang on for one more album before departing as well. The four would ever only work together on one track nearly a decade later. But that's a story for another time. Front to back, Songs for the Deaf remains one of their most aggressive, accessible, and cohesive records. The concept aids in framing the calculated chaos, and the tracks are loud as hell. I mean, how else would the deaf hear them? If you're like me, you love listening to music on vinyl. Gorgeous full-color artwork, a chance to interact with your music, and high-fidelity sound. But over time, records can pick up static and dust, causing it to sound like, well, a broken record. Keep your classics clean and static-free with, middle- with the Middle-Later Record Brush. Available for pre-order now, using the first link below. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a like rating, share it with your deaf grandmother, and be sure to tell her to subscribe so she never misses an episode. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at moremiddle8 for a chance to win a vinyl copy of Songs for the Deaf. Middle 8 record brushes are an actual thing. There's something I've been working on for a little while, and if you are a vinyl collector and you don't have one, it's actually something I'd, I recommend picking up. It also helps support the channel so that I can keep bringing you these videos. I'm truly blessed to do what I get to do, and I love it. I honestly love doing this, guys. Anyway, before I start crying, tell me, what's your favorite Queens of the Stone Age record? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching, and keep listening.